This is Markets Today. 42 minutes into the European trading day, you're seeing losses across the European benchmark. The stock 600 is down now nine-tenths of a percent. Let's get to the AI story then. Bloomberg has learned that OpenAI is in talks to sell existing employees' shares at an $86 billion valuation. The artificial intelligence startup behind ChatGPT is currently negotiating the transaction. Over in the UK, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is pushing for nations to label artificial intelligence as capable of catastrophic harm at the AI Safety Summit the UK is hosting next month. That's going to be on November 1st and 2nd. Let's bring in now Armando Gonzalez, the CEO at Ravenpack International. It's a company that is the leading provider, one of the leading providers of big data analytics for financial institutions using AI, so big banks, hedge funds. Armando, thank you very much for joining us in the studio. And it's worth noting that you and the team have been doing this since 2000. And three. Right. So, so you're long in the tooth when it comes to AI. Are we seeing, in terms of the fund flows, in terms of the hype around generative AI, are things starting to look a little frothy at this point? Look, I mean, there's always hype, uh, especially when it comes to AI. It's not the first time that we've been through a cycle like this. But what's very exciting about what's happening is that we now finally have a technology that is easy to use. It's becoming available for everybody. And more importantly, those that have built good infrastructure, data infrastructure, can really leverage these tools to get real insights from what we call big data, right? Okay. And so give us a sense of how your clients use the data that you provide to get insights. Mm. Because I was reading, uh, in terms of the business, that you, you, know, you, provide, you take unstructured data and you turn it into something that is actionable. Does that take you into tricky legal areas if you're trying to get data from certain sources? How, how does it all work? Yeah, so we focus primarily on publicly available information. That means that our systems are analyzing and collecting information that is available to everyone. But we also partner with premium content providers that have basically content you can only find behind paywalls. That means that our systems license content. They use the most high-quality information available to market participants. And as a result of the high quality of the content, you're able to generate interesting insights that are useful for market decision-making. How, how are some of your clients demands changing on the back of all the excitement around around chat GPT you've been pitching ideas and your services to them obviously for, for two decades yeah. how is the demand what are the services they're looking for now on the back of this evolution this revolution some would describe it as right so we serve about 70 percent of the best performing quantitative hedge funds in the world right they've been using Raven Pack for you know more than two mm. decades and that means that the data that we produce from publicly available information can sometimes have you know different types of impacts but when you use AI and the more modern AI you're able to detect new emerging trends and patterns much faster right and there's also connections between between the data that weren't easy to detect with old school mo machine learning models. With the new models, you're able to detect connections that no human would be able to understand, right? So these machines are really helpful tools for investors to figure out what to do in a world where it's becoming more difficult and harder mm. to make decisions when you're overwhelmed mm. by an information overload society. It, it was interesting that Tom was saying just how long your business has been around for That's because right. it feels as if, you know, the AI conversation has just become so much more mainstream mm. than it was 10, 15 years ago and, and, and even in five years ago. And I wonder how that changes the types of clients. I think you used to sell more to quants and, and now maybe there's a, a broader range of customers coming forward. How is that changing? Absolutely. I mean, first of all, we started developing these types of technologies, doing the research and being the thought leaders. Most people were worried about AI and how it could be used, but now we finally have a little bit of tailwind, and that means that more investors are interested in what we do and how they can use it. The key here is to figure out how to disseminate the insights in a simple manner, right? And natural language interfaces are making that possible. You can now ask a simple question and have a model do a very complicated task, and the answer, the answer is actually easy to use. So mm. discretionary investors, what we think of as more fundamental investors, are able to take advantage of these new technologies. Amanda, just zooming out from Ravenback and what you guys do, is there, is there a risk, is there a concern that some are underestimating the economics of AI? Because, yes, you have those user face platforms, but underlying that are the models, and the models are trained on chips, and that the compute is very expensive, and often we don't know what the outcome is going to be in terms of the revenue stream payoff, essentially, from all that investment. Is there a risk of underestimating the economics of AI? Yeah, I mean, it, it feels a little bit dot com -y in a sense, right, where we had all this hype around these technologies, but nobody was really thinking about how to commercialize it. Mm. Now, and if you're just trying to come up with problems that don't need necessarily solutions, I think that's not going to work out. It's important that we have, like, proper solutions, real problems that AI has identified and that can be useful, whether it's productivity or time efficiency improvements. More importantly, that you have a real technology base and customers that want to use it and are willing to pay. What are the new markets then for Ravenpack? 
I think for us, it's all about big data and ecosystems, creating high quality content aggregation systems that allow people to monetize content in new and unique ways, as well as making it affordable, right? Democratizing the use of big data, I think, is key. On regulation, where should the focus be? Where should it land? Should it be on the underlying technology? Is that where the regulatory scrutiny and the guardrails should be put in? Or is it the use case? Is that where the focus should be? Where do you land on that debate? I think it has to be use case driven, right? You need to see and understand how are people using the data? How are people using the models? Uh, privacy is a big concern in terms of how you source content. Licensing is going to be an important part, making sure that if you're using data and it's being monetized or commercialized in a certain manner that everyone gets paid, this needs to be a sustainable model. Right? Mm. On that similar subject, we're heading towards the, the conference at Bletchley mm. Park at the beginning of November. Uh, we've seen these headlines this morning that suggest the UK wants AI businesses to uh, have an, a label to attach to them, talking about catastrophic harm. I wonder if you reflect on that or the broader aims of, of the Bletchley event. I mean, you need to think about, again, use case, and the more important is if users are actually taking advantage of these technologies and using it for good, right, that mm -hmm. there's an, a real application, that there's no evil or harm intended with the use of AI technology, I think that needs to be embraced and supported. Uh, one, one last one on funding plans. You're, you're profitable as a, as a business. Do you, have, do you have plans to list, Amando? If so, where would you think about listing? And if you're not looking at the public markets, are you looking at private markets, private capital, that cash injection, and what do you use that funds for? Yeah, look, it feels good to be private. Uh, it's, it's nice to have good investors that are backing you, and it gives us a lot of time for innovation and just thinking things through. So we're going to be private for a little while, uh, but who knows? You know, whatever opportunity arises, we're always, we're always open. You know, is, to... that, is that because the sector thinks that public markets mm. just don't value the sector properly? We heard that from a guest yesterday. Yeah, and again, you need to prove out the use cases, I think, and it's better to just really de demonstrate in our current phase that we can solve all these problems we're identifying. So once we're, once we're there and things feel more comfortable and the market's are, are not as volatile, then that could be an, an interesting opportunity. Armando, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Armando Gonzalez, CEO of Ravenpack International.